In this video, I want to talk with you about personality disorders versus spirits. Okay, so in the world, during my training, one of the things that we were taught over and over is that if someone has a personality disorder and you start to uh, place structure on them or, or boundaries or things like that, that person is going to somehow dismantle because you're putting boundaries on them. Here's what I want to tell you about that. There's no such thing as a personality disorder. You possess the personality of the spirit that's inside of you. The spirit that occupies you is the one that's living through you. You possess the personality of the spirit that occupies you. Your personality begins to change when God is occupying you. Now, each of us have variability in our personality, but those can also be different faces of God. But if God is in you, you'll always be speaking on his authority. And there will always be certain aspects of his spirit that are in you. So in, in the word, it talks about the spirit of Elijah that rested on John the Baptist, for example. Well, that spirit comes from God. It's not really Elijah's spirit. It is a descriptor of certain personality characteristics that came from Elijah that then rested on John. And that spirit contained aspects of God's personality. If Satan dwells in you, you're going to have a personality that is of Satan. If God dwells in you, you're going to have a personality that is of God, which is why the world likes to distort the aspects of God's personality to make good evil and evil good. Love, 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 love. And what does that mean? Oh, it means tolerating sin. It means never confronting people about their bad behavior, about their sinful behavior. Don't you dare speak truth. Is that actually the definition of love? Of course it's not. God spoke truth. God confronted. God cast evil out of the camp. Here's what you're going to notice. When a person has engaged in a particular behavior, they have sinned against you, for example, you need to confront it. You need to reprove and you need to not be cowardly. You need to not be afraid of the spirit that's in them. And as a matter of fact, God says to test that spirit. So it is important for you to set parameters and boundaries and structure and expectation. And when you do that with someone who has a satanic spirit in them, you can expect that that spirit is going to rear its ugly head. It's going to manifest. You're going to see and hear that spirit. Because what has happened is beyond this idea that they just don't like boundaries and they just don't like structure. What is happening is that you have exposed them. You have exposed that spirit to not be a spirit of truth. You have removed the mask. In fact, the world even says that regarding so what they like to call narcissists, right? Which is this the character of the enemy. Oh, the mask got removed. But if you're speaking on the authority of the word, what has happened is that you brought them to the light to be exposed. And people who walk in darkness, they don't come towards the light. And when you force them into the light, they don't like it. They don't like being confronted. They don't like being exposed. So what you will see is a spirit that is manifesting. What does the word tell you to do? The word tells you dust your feet, period. Test the spirit in everyone to see whether they're from God. And if they're not, dust your feet. But what does the world tell you? Oh, these are the signs to recognize a narcissist. What does it do you any good to diagnose anybody? You test the spirit. You don't sit and try to figure that person out. You test the spirit to see whether they're from God. And if they're not, you need to get away from them. Now, this becomes a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with people such as spouses or children. Spouses, let's take that one first. What God has brought together, no man should be separating. So if that's God's command then he knows how to change your spouse. He knows how to bring them low and make them change. But guess what? You don't. So you need to deal with the sin in your heart that led you to be with someone like that in the first place because you likely have a spirit too, which means you need to return to God. You need to do your individual work and start healing. And as far as your spouse is concerned, you pray and fast for them and God will work miracles. You need not be focused on them like many people do when they are in relationships with people who have these spirits. They start focusing on the other person and they start trying to control them. By what spirit are they doing that? Not by God's spirit because that's not what he's called you to do. 
you need to deal with your own idolatry, including self-idolatry. Now let's take children. You have children whom you have identified to be like their parent. Don't do that to your kids. You have a role in that. If you have a child who's struggling with the spirit, it, that spirit got in because your family, which is led by you and your spouse, is not airtight. That's how that got in. So you have a role in that. You have a role in that happening to your child. And you also have a role, thankfully, in helping that, to relieve your child of that spirit. You need to stand in the truth. You need to stand in those boundaries and that structure. You need to pray and fast for your child and you need to work on yourself. Someone in, uh, in Sabbath today was sharing their testimony of doing that very thing. And what I heard in them sharing that is that as they have been healing as an individual, God is now moving them exactly as I've told you. He will move you as an individual. He will heal you as an individual. And then he will move you to walk in the authority that he has given you in the responsibilities and trusts that he has given you. And as you walk in that, correctly according to his spirit. And as you are being changed, I promise you, your children are going to change too. God will teach you how to stand. He will teach you how to be strong. He will teach you how to do the right thing. And he will testify and he will do things in your child that you are not capable of doing. When you understand this to be a spiritual issue, and when you understand the chinks in your armor, then you can understand the chinks in your family's armor and you can begin to examine and evaluate where is the spirit getting in? Why does this keep happening to my family? And as you do the work that you're supposed to be doing, God is going to heal and seal, seal those chinks in your armor. The world cannot offer you that, guys. The only one who can heal and the only one who can seal is God. You cannot heal apart from him. And the only way for you to get to the father who has all authority is for you to go through the son. So it's not enough for you to fabricate some God. You must go through Jesus Christ. You must learn who he is. You must know him and you must walk with him. That is what you're not going to hear in therapy. That's what you're not going to hear anywhere in the world by any of those experts and life coaches because they don't speak on the authority of God. The only way that you're going to hear this is by God's servants, by his shepherds. They don't have anything to gain. They are not trying to build their empire here or their mega church or their status or their pomp or their glory, their worldly reputation and renown. You're going to hear it from low, broken people like me. You will not hear it at the pulpit because what those people do is they shepherd you to themselves for their own glory, for their own status, for their own reputation and for money. And therefore, they like to set themselves up as experts. They like to gather followers for themselves and make people forget God's name. But what God's true shepherds are doing is they're shepherding you back to him. Return to him and he'll heal. he will heal you. Fast, pray, work on yourself. What am I going to say to you? Okay, now give me your check and I'll see you next week when you'll give me another check. And then the following week when you'll give me another check. What am I gaining out of this? Absolutely nothing here. My reward is set before me. I trust in that reward. I trust in that God. You want to keep gathering around yourself, many teachers who tell you what your itching ears want to hear. You want to make diagnoses, fooling yourself into thinking that you can change those people. Go ahead. But I'm telling you the truth. That's what's going on. This is not a personality disorder. It is the personality of the spirit that occupies a person. When you try to set boundaries, when you try to stick up for yourself, when you try to do anything that has anything to do with truth, the spirit in them is going to manifest. It's going to attack you, not because of a personality disorder and not to cure. And, and the solution is not to cure a personality disorder, but because that spirit has been exposed. And as long as, as that spirit continues to reside in that person, you can't therapize a spirit. It needs to come out. And you need to know what your role is for that spirit to come out. Sometimes it's dust your feet, fast and pray. Most of the time it's return to God, work on yourself, fast and pray. And he will move you into position. Please discern this message with God.